For more tutorials, videos, and reviews, check out creatingtracks.com. Hey guys, welcome to creatingtracks.com and today we're going to take a look at using machine inside of Ableton as a VST. So let's go ahead and create a new MIDI track by right clicking, insert MIDI track, and on that MIDI track I'll drag machine 2 and it'll take a few seconds to start. And there it is, it's loaded up and the first thing you can notice right away is that our play and pause button has been deactivated. And the reason for that is that Machine is now a VST inside of Ableton. So it's not a DAW of its own, it's a VST. So Ableton is the main host. And that is where we will control our play and pause from. So inside of here, if I click play, then you can see that in Machine, our timeline has started playing. Now it is very important to know that Machine is not the master, it is a slave to Ableton. So Ableton will control most of the master controls. Now our tempo, is also going to be controlled by Ableton. So if I move the tempo in my Ableton, then you can see in machine over here, it's going to start changing as well. So I'll just take it to 120 for now. And you can see that on our machine, it's also changed over here. So another thing you can notice is that this is kind of small and we can't really expand these windows over here. So let's go ahead and click on this arrow. And over here, you can see we have view. And inside of view, we have small, medium, and large. So let's click on small, and this is what small looks like. This is medium, and then we have large. So I'm gonna keep it to medium for now, just so we can also see Ableton at the same time. And the time signature in your machine will also be controlled by Ableton, since it's the master DAW, but the metronome does work in your machine. So you could click on this icon over here, or on your machine you can hit metronome, and if I hit play, So you can see that going through, and even Ableton can play its own metronome. Now you can also record inside of machine. So in my machine, if I hit browse, and then I go and pick a kit, so I'll pick something like a drum kit, and we'll go into the vinyl kit category, and if I load it up, So I have this pattern over here, it's two bars long, and if I want to navigate to a certain point in this pattern, I can't click on my machine and navigate. Instead I'll have to navigate through my Ableton timeline. And you can also see that it's constantly looping inside of machine. So if I play this, So you can see that in Ableton, our timeline keeps going, but in machine, it keeps looping this pattern. So for that, we can select this loop button and uncheck it. And that way it's not gonna loop inside of machine. So these numbers in machine are representing your bars. So seven, nine, 11, 13, 15, 17. These are uh, your, they're the same numbers that are inside of Ableton over here as well. So 17 over here is the same as 17 in machine. So if I select, you can see that my line gets placed over there. If I click on 13, my line gets placed on 13, and then number nine gets placed on nine. So this is our timeline that's being controlled by Ableton. So if you wanna navigate, let's say you have a new scene and a new pattern, and this pattern is eight bars long, then you can see that it starts on number three. So if I click on three in Ableton, that's where this pattern starts. So if I want to navigate at any point inside of this pattern, I won't be able to click on my machine. Instead, I will have to know what number it lies on and then select that number in my Ableton timeline. So now if you want to route your audio from your machine to Ableton and you want your waveform to show up in Ableton um, for your master track, you can select a new audio track. So insert audio track. And on your machine track in the output, we're gonna send it to the new audio track we just created. So to audio in this case. Now, if I open up machine and then I hit play in Ableton, then you're gonna see that you have no audio. And that's because it's being routed to audio too, but there's no audio input. So let's turn on this record button and make sure it's at auto instead of off. And now if I play,
All right, so every single sound inside of machine is being routed to this audio track. So I can also turn down the volume of my machine track. So if I turn this down and hit record and play, and if I hit the main record, you can see that we now have rendered audio in a new audio track and all of this audio came from machine. And if I turn off my machine track, it will still play. And you can always go ahead and change your tempo in Ableton and then re-record your file. So I'll turn on my machine track. So you can always change your tempo, your time signature, and record accordingly. And inside a machine, you could also uh, navigate through all these options that you have on, on top. And then you have your search icon, which is your browse. So you can click on that and it'll expand your browse options. And another thing you can do is you can record your patterns as well. So if I have a new pattern, let's say I delete this and I delete my first scene for now. And in my Ableton, I'm just gonna delete the previous recording. And in machine, make sure the record is on, the metronome is turned on, and I just have to hit play, and I can start recording. So if I go into my pattern three, I can see that it has been recorded and I could always quantize that, but for now I can go to my audio track, hit this record button, hit the main record. So those are a few basic things that you should know before you use machine as a VST because you could get confused on how to navigate and how to use the play and record and all of those technical things. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it and subscribe to our channel for a lot more. And we will see you next time. Peace.